The original X-Pro1 was released in 2012 as a follow-up to Fuji's really successful X100, the original X100. Uh, and it was an interchangeable lens camera, it still had the hybrid viewfinder, and it introduced the world to X-Trans sensors for the very first time. There's a lot of excitement around that camera. A lot of people thought it was the Leica killer, you hear that a lot. Uh, but, you know, in the end, the camera sort of didn't live up to the hype. The autofocus was kind of horrible. No, it was horrible. Uh, the performance was a little lackluster, and, and the camera sort of languished. Uh, not a lot of people paid attention to it. Uh, fast forward four years, and, and the rumor mill started swirling that an X-Pro2 was on the horizon. And, you know, I remember thinking, all Fuji has to do is give me an X-Pro1 that actually works, and I'm going to be happy. Did they do it with the X-Pro2? Well, yeah, in a lot of ways they did that and more. One of the first things I noticed about the X-Pro2 was the improvements they made with the autofocus speed. If anyone has ever shot with an X-Pro1, it was kind of the dog's breakfast for autofocus speed. And now, uh, it's just a non-issue. It is so good as to not even be a consideration. You remember with the X100 review I did uh, a few weeks back, I said, oh, you know, we all have to get used to it. Autofocus is here to stay, blah, 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 blah. Just deal with it. You really don't have to deal with it anymore. This thing is so fast. I remember there's one time on the street when uh, the light was beautiful. I was walking down Dundas Street here in Toronto, and I saw this this uh, woman and her daughter walking towards me. I was like, "Fuck, she's so good." So I pulled the camera to my eye. They're walking towards me. I'm walking towards them. Locked focus on them. Got the shot exactly without any kind of delay. It's that quick. Uh, like it's a matter. It's not even a matter of pre-planning. You just sort of react to the scene and the autofocus is going to keep up with you. Now it's not going to be that way with every lens uh, in the Fuji lineup. With the 35 f2 that is clearly the lens designed for this camera out of the gate, it's so fast as to be mind-boggling. My mind is boggled because of the speed of the focus. Another thing that makes the X-Pro2 stand out is the excellent hybrid viewfinder. The hybrid viewfinder is a combination of an optical viewfinder, think Leica M, uh, and an electronic viewfinder, or EVF, that almost every other mirror mirrorless camera on the market has. Uh, I'm a big fan of optical viewfinders for a lot of reasons. Number one, uh, it lets you see your subject at the exact moment of exposure. There's no blackout. So there's no guesswork. When you're shooting with mirrorless cameras, often when you hit the exposure, there's that quarter of a second blackout in the EVF where you're kind of wondering what's happening with your subject. Maybe you got it, maybe you didn't. Completely eliminated. The other thing about optical viewfinders is it lets you see the area outside of your shot. So you get to see what things might be entering your frame before they're in the frame. You know, there, there's all this talk of the decisive moment. Well, Decisive moment means you're not reacting to something that just happened. It means you're anticipating what's going to happen so that your shot is precisely at the time that you need. And being able to see stuff coming in the frame before it's in the frame uh, really helps with that. I'm a quick shooter on the street. I'm walking, I see something, I pull up the camera and I take the shot. Uh, optical viewfinders are always on. I mean, practically they're always on. They, the camera could go into rest and you won't see the frame lines. but for most intents and purposes, this is always on. If you've ever picked up a, a Sony a7 or any other camera with an EVF, there's a period when you put the camera to your eye where it's like quarter second, half second, where it's black before it actually activates and shows you the scene. That's, that kind of makes me crazy because I'm like, oh, why isn't the camera working? With an optical viewfinder, I can see the scene the instant the camera goes to the eye. And then, you know, this is a carryover from my year shooting with Leica. Leicas have a range finder. This is an optical viewfinder. And the only difference uh, is the fact that Leica's rangefinder has a mechanism built in so that you can see when your scene is in focus with the manual focus lens without looking through that lens. That's what a rangefinder is. So for all, for all intents and purposes, if you're going to uh, shoot with autofocus, it's the same thing. It's an optical viewfinder, and that's really the thing that matters to me. Oh, one more thing about the optical viewfinder. Uh, one of the things that happens with optical viewfinders, because the viewfinder is not on the same plane as the lens, the closer you focus, the more out of alignment your scene is going to be. Now there's, there's frame lines that appear inside the optical viewfinder that show you an approximation of where your frame is, uh, but the closer you get, the more off that is. So Leica cameras, for example, will move the frame lines down and to the right the closer that you focus, uh, which helps. It's a, it's a better approximation. Uh, Fuji, and this camera in particular, as you focus closer, you'll see that not only does the frame lines move to the bottom right, but the size of the frame gets smaller because the closer you get to the subject, the more they're going to fill your frame. So it's actually a much more accurate system uh, than anything that's come before it from that perspective. 
Uh, this is a good viewfinder and it's going to suit anyone that shoots on the street perfectly well. Let's talk about the shutter. Uh, you know, a big deal was made about the Leica M262 having a new shutter mechanism. Ooh, Leica's got a new shutter mechanism. Well, let me tell you something. Dear Leica, your shutter's still way too loud. Listen to this. This is the quietest, I want to say quietest, the sexiest sounding. It's a really satisfying, quiet sound. Um, it's actually quieter than an M6. Uh, it's, uh, I have been standing right next to people taking a picture of their face and shot and they haven't turned around. They haven't, it just, there's something about this camera that's discreet, but it's still, you can still hear it. You can still feel it. One of the things about the X100 that was weird is you almost had to use the force to determine. It had that focal plane shutter that was dead silent. And it was often difficult to tell if you'd made an exposure or not. You had to kind of hope that you could feel it, you couldn't hear it. It was a weird thing. This is very discreet. Can you, I mean, put it by the mic. Can you even hear that? I'm, it's good. And when you compare it to something like the Sony a7R, which has a notoriously loud shutter. Listen to this. <laughs> no, this camera has a lot going for it, but discrete shutter is not one of them. Listen to that compared to, oh, loud, quiet. quiet. Taking pictures. They've made so many improvements to the construction of their cameras over the years, and the X-Pro2 is really, from my perspective, the best feeling Fuji that's come out to date. The X100 was great, it was discreet, it was small. Uh, it felt a little light in the hand. Uh, the X-T1 always feels a little rubbery to me. It didn't really feel, it felt like spongy, rubbery, like it just, I don't know, it didn't, I, I didn't like the way it felt when I was holding it. This one inspires confidence in me. There's a great little uh, lip on the front and another lip on the back. Uh, one for your thumb, one for your fingers. You don't even need like a thumbs up. Like this thing, this, this thing gives you a good handle uh, on the camera. There's no creaks, there's no groans, there's no wiggly bits. Uh, this is a pro thing, it's a pro camera. A pro level camera, that just doesn't even make sense because who cares if it's a pro camera. This is a solidly built instrument uh, designed for taking pictures and uh, it feels to me like it's gonna last years uh, before I even have to worry about wanting well i'm gonna want something new next week but i won't need it <laughs> this will be fine so here's something <laughs> here's something this camera has this camera comes with dual card slots now why would you want dual card slots i've been shooting digital since 1997 yeah i go that far back it was one of the very first digital cameras to hit the market i started with digital photography and i have never had a corrupt file. I've never lost a file or a shot because a compact flash card or an SD card has failed on me in the field. So having the backup kind of seems you've done it. Well, on the one hand, yeah, you, got, you could argue, well, you should have it. It doesn't hurt to have it, but you don't really need it. Like, it's just not necessary. But think about this. We're shooting on the street. You got two card slots here, right? So you, you take a picture of uh, the lady with the outrageous hair that looks like a chandelier. Oh, your hair looks like a chandelier. And she gets all up in arms. Yeah, I hate you. Delete that picture. Okay, do, 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 deleted. Sorry, on your way, it's on your backup card. A little devious, eh, who cares? The, the point is, it'll get you out of a situation and you won't even have to stop and question whether that was the shot of the century. If someone really insists on deleting something, go ahead, delete it, you got a backup, who cares? Listen. Uh, no camera is perfect, and neither is the Fuji X Pro 2. There's a few things about this camera that actually make me crazy. Not crazy, but make me scratch my head as to why anyone would design a camera this way. One of the things is this crazy ISO dial. They included the ISO dial inside the shutter speed dial, which might feel kind of retro, but it's terrible on so many levels. Number one, it's really hard to see. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. Uh, but you're gonna fiddle with this thing. It's difficult to see what exposure you're at or what ISO you're at. Uh, it, it's just fumbly and weird and I'd much rather just have it as a dial that I could set through a menu to be perfectly honest. I, I think uh, uh, Leica actually did this bet. They have a dedicated ISO button on the back. We use ISO. When you're shooting digital, you use ISO all the time. 
uh, if you cross the street and from a sunny day to the, sh the from the sunny side of the street to the shadow side of the street, you're going to change your ISO uh, rather than changing your shutter speed. It just makes sense. You want direct access to it. And this is a little too fumbly for me. On top of that, look at this. Look where the window is, right? It's fine if you're at automatic, uh, automatic shutter speed, but let's say you drop down to 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed on this camera. Now all of a sudden, all of your ISO numbers are upside down. What the hell? How am I supposed to set that? I, it's, this is terrible. It's, just, it's a terrible system. Uh, it, it, it looks old timey. It looks like, oh, that looks like a, an old timey camera thing. Who cares? It's just not the way that we use digital cameras. I would much rather have a dedicated button and a dial to change the ISO really fast so I can change it anytime I want without having to fumble with this bloody thing. I can't see these numbers. They're, what, what ISO is that? Is that? Can you see that? 1,000, no, 12. Yeah, it's terrible. Anyways, is that enough to make me hate the camera? No, it's enough to bug me, but I'm dealing with it. Uh, <laughs> and that's not, a, I'm a little OCD, so I'm dealing with it. That's as good as it gets. Uh, one other thing that uh, is weird uh, about this camera is they're, listen, they finally, Fuji finally on the X-Pro, the X-Pro 1 had no diopter. Just like Leica's have no diopter. You have to screw in a weird diopter lens over top of the viewfinder. It's like, hello, welcome to 1966. Uh, they finally gave us a diopter on the X-Pro 2. Excellent. And they put it unprotected on the outside of the camera body. So that in my case, my lens strap just through normal day to day operation keeps adjusting it. This is, I'm going to put a piece of tape over this because it's terrible. Then you pick up the camera, it's like, oh, everything's out of focus now. Okay, there we go. Oh, we're better. Uh, bad design. I look at the, X, the X100 has it hidden away. Uh, the X-T1, every camera has it hidden away except Fuji X-Pro2. It's right on the, they might have made a giant crank on the outside that just automatically went every time you took a step hate that. A couple of the buttons are in weird spots. The uh, autofocus lock button. If you do back button focus on your camera, a lot of guys with autofocus cameras do this, where you keep it in manual focus mode, hit the autofocus lock button on the back of the camera, it will focus to a certain point and then you can walk around. And So for example, if you're uh, using the camera, like I talked about with the X100T review, if you're using the autofocus to set zone focus, uh, for example, uh, you would use that to do it, right? Set it in manual focus mode, focus at something 12 feet away, uh, and then you're basically in the hyperfocal distance for your lens, go. It's in a weird spot on the back of the camera so that you kind of have to, you're, you're shooting, you're like, you need a double jointed thumb to get this. I don't know why it's there. L listen, I, what, I, I have to make a conclusion here. I have to make a recommendation. I've been shooting with this camera as my only camera for the past four weeks. This is how I do reviews. Some people get cameras, they shoot with it for a week, they take a picture of a squirrel, they take a picture of a color chart and they go, oh, this camera's this, this camera's that. I actually use the camera for an extended period of time as my only camera for shooting street photography. Uh, I can tell you this, um, the highest praise that I ever gave uh, was for the Leica M240 review that I did. And that camera, I said, disappeared. It just became a tool that you use to make photographs. Uh, that's high praise, and this camera is 99.995 of that. The camera gets so many things right that it's easy to overlook the couple little things that it misses the mark on. The ISO dial, eh, the couple button placements, eh, the, the, uh, eh, it's all fine. What it boils down to at the end of the day, this is the kind of camera that I want to have out with me shooting. In terms of an endorsement, hey, I ordered one of these myself. I'm not sure how much more of an endorsement you can get than that. It's a good camera, it's going to serve you well. I was shooting with Leica. I'm moving over to, to Fuji uh, for a couple reasons. One of them is the X-Pro2.